Welcome to Men Alive, a biblical journey to help us conform to the image of Jesus Christ. I'm your host, Paul Estabrooks. Our teacher is my longtime friend, Dr. Jim Cunningham, consultant in adult education, director of Go Teach Global, and author of the book, Men Alive. Paul, we discussed part one of our Christian Manifesto. We noted that Karl Marx, Adolf Hitler, John Dewey, Paul Kurtz, Saul Alinsky, and Black Lives Matter each wrote a manifesto proclaiming their philosophy of life and what they believe to be truth with a declaration of their plans and motives for implementing their worldview. We said during part one, as Christian men today, we have a challenge. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Colossae and said, See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depend on human traditions and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. Colossians 2.8 And we agreed the word philosophy is derived from two Greek words, philia or philios, meaning love, and sophia, meaning wisdom. Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, derives its name from the same root word, philia, meaning love, and their sports team, notwithstanding. Every man has to answer four philosophical questions. What is real? What is man? What is truth? And what is moral? In part one, we covered what is real and what is man. Jim, walk us slowly through the answers to the next two questions. What is truth and what is moral? Remembering to keep it easy to understand. We know that truth is never plural. There can only be one truth. Man cannot make up what he wants to believe and call it truth. We believe truth is revealed to us by God. Truth is objectively comprehensible and truth is authoritative yet cohesive and should produce unity. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says that God is truth. We know that God's word is truth. 2 Thessalonians 2.10 and 11 said, They did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. Therefore God will send them a deluding influence so that they might believe what is false. John 14.6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 17 says the Holy Spirit is truth. So as Christians, we are not following some cosmic fairy tale. We know what truth is. God first revealed himself to us through what he called general revelation. Psalm 19, 1 says, The heavens, the clouds, the wind, the sun, the moon, the stars, lightning, thunder, rain, snow, are telling the glory of God. How foolish of the man to worship an idol made of wood or gold. Idols have eyes but cannot see, they have ears but cannot hear, they have mouths but cannot speak, and legs but cannot move. There is only one truth. God made everything. Genesis 1.1 says, God made everything God made. Every flower, animal, bird, human, everything we see in nature tells us about God's eternal power and his divine nature. It reveals God's truth. Second, truth is revealed by God's special revelation. Second Peter 1.21 says, Men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The words they spoke over a period of a thousand years were true, and the Bible we have is a book of truth. Number three, God spoke to us by his incarnate revelation, Jesus of Nazareth. His only Son, God sent His Son to earth to become, as John the Baptizer said, the Lamb of God has taken away the sins of the world. We beheld His glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I played Canadian-style football in high school, and we had referees and rules and painted white lines down the sides of the fields. And if we went over the line, the whistle blew, and the play was ruled out of bounds. The rules allowed the game to proceed with fairness, fun, and truthfulness. Philosophically speaking, truth is an unchanging statement or principle that follows the rules the Bible set out written by God himself, our Creator. The creation of God is true. The heavens and the earth declare the glory of God. The revealed word of God is true. 
The Bible reveals the truth of God's plan for mankind and the redemption he has provided for them from their sins. The incarnate Son of God is true, Jesus Christ and his teachings. We believe Jesus when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I find it fascinating to study how philosophers answer the question, what is truth? Their underlying belief, I could say their underlying lie, is they say there is no absolute truth. Progressives and pragmatists argue that truth is whatever each individual decides is best. Example, whatever works for them. The existentialist believes truth is personally relative and individually determined according to the needs of the individual. One of the philosophies I find the scariest is constructivism, a theory of knowledge that encourages the learner to construct truth as they perceive it. These false philosophies say that truth is personal and is whatever a person believes to be true for that person. Again, there are no absolute truths in their way view. Your opinion is your evidence. Billy Graham constantly taught the Bible says. He resorted to the absolute truth of scriptures. Not so today. When someone says, I feel or I think, that often has in their mind as much weight and as value as the Bible says. I even heard one pastor say, I know the Bible says that, but the Bible does not mean that. Wow, are you saying he felt his opinion of what the Bible meant was more important than what the Bible said? Years later, when I reminded him of what he said, he apologized for that statement and admitted he had misspoken. You are listening to Men Alive. For a PDF of this Christian manifesto, email Dr. Jim at menaliveuntogod at gmail.com. That's menaliveuntogod at gmail.com. And request my Christian manifesto. Jim, we've looked at what is real, what is man, and what is truth. Let me ask you a few related questions that some listeners may be thinking before you address the topic of what is moral. Are moral standards absolute or relative? For example, do universal transcultural moral absolutes exist for all people, for every generation and every culture, or is morality relative to historical periods or a specific culture? Pablo, most worldviews believe there are no absolutes, no universal transcultural right or wrong morality. Morality is relative to the individual. John Dewey, the father of progressivism, wrote, quote, Morality and moral judgments are individualized and determined by one's life experienced. Unquote. If it feels good and no one gets injured, just do it. Each person becomes their own judge of their actions and responsible for their consequences. Choices have consequences, so consider the consequences before deciding. No need for Ten Commandments. That's archaic. Morality is now within one's mind. God becomes an impersonal force or energy. Jesus is reduced to a avatar, a path, a guide, an enlightened master. Can morality be separated from religion? World religions reveal men's views of how they think we should live to be right with God. Philosophers who believe there are no moral absolutes believe that all philosophies lead to some common utopian place where man will be governed by the moral good of all. The problem, Pablo, is each philosophy has a different view of morality. Hindus tell followers to worship the cow. Buddhists say, eat the cow. Sikhs say, cover your head. Hare Krishna say, shave your head. Animists eat their enemies. Muslims are told to kill their enemies. Morality varies with every philosophy and every world religion based on those philosophies. Some worship their God on a full moon. Others must worship him on Fridays or on Saturdays or after sundown or five times a day or facing in a certain direction or only from one specific place like a river, a city, or by purchasing certain fruit or lighting certain candles or in silence or with lots of noisy music or wake up everyone with a megaphone at 4 a.m. to worship. Christianity reveals God's view of how much he wants mankind to have a relationship with him. 
God so loved the world that he gave us his Son, Jesus of Nazareth, that whoever believes in him has everlasting life. Christianity is beyond a philosophy or a religion. Christianity is a relationship. We have to answer to what is moral based on what Jesus taught. Jesus taught us to love our enemies. Morality based on man's obedience to God rules revealed in the Bible can never be separated from Christianity. Morality based on man's obedience to man's rule can be separated from any religion. So the question must be asked, can morality ever be separated from religion? Christian morality can never be separated from a commitment to a biblical lifestyle. Many worldviews are individuals attempting to find meaning in a world of relativism. Uncertainty replaces biblical certainty. We as men seeking to be transformed to the image of Jesus Christ need to have a crystal clear understanding of what the Bible says is moral or is not moral according to God's revealed truth in Scripture. Every man listening to this program, regardless of their religion or philosophy of life, knows it is immoral to have sex with our daughters. It is wrong. It's called incest. We know killing our babies is wrong. It's called abortion. We know hating any human made in the image of God is wrong. Jesus called it murder. We know sleeping with any woman other than our wife is wrong. It's called adultery. We know lusting after whatever our neighbor has that we don't have is wrong. It's called coveting. Men, we are not globs of spittle floating through the universe, merrily creating our own value system and making our own rules. We are made in the image of God. We believe the Bible is true and the laws of God are absolute. That's our Christian Manifesto, part two. Let's remember the three truths God has given us. The creation of God is true. The heavens and the earth declare the glory of God. The revealed Word of God, the Bible, is true. And the incarnate Son of God, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through Him. And that's the truth. And there you have it, men. Dr. Jim's Christian Manifesto, Part 2. For a PDF of this Christian manifesto, email Dr. Jim at menaliveuntogod at gmail.com. That's menaliveuntogod at gmail.com. And request My Christian Manifesto. Men Alive is a production of Go Teach Global. Visit our website at goteachglobal.com. Until next time, I'm Paul Brooks on behalf of Dr. Jim Cunningham, encouraging you to become men alive, transformed into the image of Jesus Christ.